Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about this little soldering iron. And you may have recently seen this on Jeff's channel, uh, which is where I got the idea to get this. I saw it on there. I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, Jeff helped me reach out to the company to see if they'd send one so that way it can be used with uh, this same project that I hinted at in my last video about JLC PCB. Uh, a quick note uh, is that, uh, yes, I've been doing a lot of uh, sponsored content lately. No, that's not how this channel's going to be from here on out. It's just this particular project. I saw opportunities to bring some different things together and uh, make something happen. So that's what's going on right now. Uh, and this video is, in fact, a sponsored video. We're just going to focus on checking this out and probably my next video will be about this. Okay, so let's uh, dive right into this and see what's included in the packaging. Uh, I did have to check a couple of reviews online to figure out how to say the name of this company, but it's a secure, uh, I believe. I think it's because they make screwdrivers is where they came up with that name. It's kind of a play on the word of secure. But let's uh, take a look at this secure soldering iron. Um, so we have the soldering iron itself. We have two different tips because this one can use either your Hako T12, which is what I prefer, or your TS100 if you're already in that camp. Um, and then you have a cable so that way you can use a lithium iron battery pack. This comes with some lead-free solder that you may or may not want to use. Uh, and then you have these two extra screws in there. Uh, this, I already removed it off the board. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and then you have a little stand for it. The manual, which is a pretty simple manual. And then this semi-rigid uh, kind of glasses style case to hold it in. Uh, so I think I may have got a different package than Jeff did because I don't believe his came with that. Um, but yeah, so in our manual, because we'll start there, uh, we have instructions that are in English on the other side. Um, it gives us a good idea of what all the different uh, messages mean on there and may mostly just some safety warnings. It does have instructions about which tip you're going to use. Uh, basically telling you if you're going to use the T12, take it apart and take these two out, which is what I already did there. So you're going to take those two out. There's two screws and then you can use your T12. Uh, if you don't and you just put it in there, it just reads a message of short and it won't do anything because you have shorted out those outputs, which go to those two terminals there. Um, so... Yep, you do actually have to open it up and remove it. It doesn't damage anything. It has a overcurrent protection. Uh, it doesn't blow the fuse. Uh, it tries It tries to feed some current. It reads that there's overcurrent and just says short and shuts itself down. Um, so then if you do want to use your TS-100s, then you have to go uh, put the that back in there. I, I probably won't ever use the TS-100 because I already own a lot of T12 tips, um, which is really where this one interested me is they so most of them don't really support the t12 i mean like it'll work but when you put it in it sticks out like that far you'd, you'd be sit sticking a there so um they they made this one where it recesses it back in there and will hold it in properly so um let's actually take a look at this thing uh in operation get a little closer look at it uh and see how it works Okay, so let's uh, get this protective lens off here. All right, so uh, let's just go ahead and power it up without a tip in there. And we get a check tip error on there. So it shows that we're running at 24 volts and that we don't have a tip and it beeps at us. Now, mine came with the conical tip, uh, but you can specify to get a different tip. I actually don't like conical tips. Uh, I only ever use them for putting those... Uh, thermal inserts into uh, plastic, like 3D printed stuff. Uh, I prefer a, a wedge tip, a hoof tip, or uh, pretty much anything other than a, uh, <laughs> a conical. Uh, the J hooks are nice too when you're doing uh, some surface mount stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and turn it on with a tip in there. And we're just at ambient right now. It doesn't start heating it yet. You have to press a to start, if I remember. Yep, A puts it into the work mode, so now it's heating up, and we're pulling two and a half amps at 24 volts. 
So just under the 75 watts that you would kind of expect. Now that doesn't mean this isn't uh, pulsing it right. It could be the tip itself just doesn't draw enough current to make that full uh, 75 watts that you'd normally see on it. Okay, so let's start doing some actual work with it. So to change the temperature, you just press the B button and it changes it right there on the smaller screen there. So we got it set to 350. Uh, let's see which that'll work for us and um, just go ahead and press start and well I just hit stop hold hold the a button and there we go we're in the work mode we're gonna put these through hole components on here uh, we're gonna have a good bit of thermal mass on this one so it'll be a pretty good test right there uh, this guy there's not too much thermal mass let's start with it get a little flux on there you know if you're new to soldering the key to, uh, to good soldering is buying good or decent flux and good or decent uh, solder itself. Uh, the iron really, uh, it makes a big difference, but not the world's biggest difference. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that on there. We're going to put this pin connector right here. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna use these tweezers to kind of prop it up. All right, get our flux. And this ground right here is a ground plane throughout on both sides, so should take a good bit to do that. And there we go. Really a uh, perfectly good solder joint there. Got a little crooked, but uh, that's not the problem of the soldering iron. Let's let's fix that. Turn it back on. There we go. That's straight. And so that gets these two components on there. So we are good. It definitely works good, has enough power to power through uh, this uh, huge ground plane I have right there. And then we also have another pretty large ground plane on both sides. And I can see underneath the connector enough to see that I do have wetting on uh, both sides of the board there. Um, so yeah, uh, I think uh, it's definitely powerful enough to do anything you're hobby level solder work would be doing. Uh, you, you may run into some power issues on, um, uh, on amplifiers because amplifiers have these just absolutely ridiculous um, planes on them with a ton of thermal mass, uh, but you really run into that same problem with uh, some of the, the um, smaller size JBC tips and uh, the HACO station itself, it's more of a limitation of the tip and not what's driving the tip here. And that's really where I, I can come in and recommend something like this is your important pieces here to soldering are your solder, your flux, and your tip uh, with these cartridge style tips more than what's driving the tip. Like you need some accuracy with driving it. You need to make sure you're not going way too hot or way too cold. You need to make sure you're not, um, you know, just not driving it fast enough to, if you're not pumping enough current in there, it's going to be way too slow to heat up, which is why I'm running it at the 24 volts. It'll run at 12 volts as well. It's, you just can't get enough power into it at 12 volts to really take full advantage of the tip. Uh, but that's not the tool itself. That's the way the tip works. That's just the way it's going to work. So um, just something to be aware of there is you're going to, if you, the internal resistance is the same no matter what on this. Well, I mean, it goes up and down with temperature, but I mean, the, the internal resistance is, is something that's set here. Uh, so if you change your voltage lower, you're going to get less current, which means less heat, um, less power. Um, so yeah, definitely something to, to be aware of if you plan on using it at 12 volts, not going to be quite as fast, but you can just put it in your cigarette lighter or your car and it will work at that point. So uh, yeah, running it at 12 volts, 
the the problem you have is is with the current limit here because it's not like it's a boost converter inside here that's going to to boost it up to 24 volts and just pull more current uh you're you're just gonna run 12 volts through the tip um so not i'm not knocking the 12 volts at all i'm just saying okay so now let's do something a little more scientific with it let's uh actually check the accuracy of it so all right it says that we're set at uh, 300C and that we are working at 300C. So let's see how accurate the factory calibration is on it with this tip. So we're at about 290 um, is, is where we are there. So uh, the factory calibration is a little bit low, but you can just hold down the B button and you can work your way over to calibrate and you can adjust your calibration right here to correct for that. And that is uh, completely understandable. Uh, I think uh, being within 10, 10 uh, degrees Celsius is reasonable for a factory calibration without trying to set it at all. Uh, you don't need an expensive thermocoupler like this to do it. Uh, there are cheaper ones out there for doing a calibration yourself if you really want that level of accuracy. Uh, but honestly, you only need that level of accuracy uh, if you're doing production level stuff. As a hobbyist, you can be plus or minus 10 degrees Celsius and not ever know that you had a problem there. So uh, just something I thought was worth seeing is you never see that in test done in kind of these lower end soldering irons is to see, you know, well, just how accurate am I? So let's uh, go back back. So let's test this now down to uh, the 200 degrees C and turn it on and see where we're at there if we're also uh, 10 degrees off. Yeah, again, about 10 degrees low, uh, maybe a little bit more that time. Uh, let's go up higher now. Let's go to 400 degrees C. And we're up to temperature. And right about the same again, about 10 degrees C low. So yeah, definitely not a problem, uh, especially since it's consistently there. Uh, it's not, it's not like it's a problem with it reading it. Uh, that's definitely just a calibration issue. If we had like some sort of weird curve to it, uh, I'd be a little more concerned. But since that was just right on 10 degrees, uh, I really wouldn't worry about it. Um, so my overall recommendation on this is this is probably the cheapest uh, soldering iron that you're going to be able to get to get started. So if, if you're currently working with like a weller that's non-adjustable that you just plug into the wall, you absolutely need to just throw that out and buy one of these. Um, if you are thinking about getting into the hacko line of things, if you're thinking about buying an actual hacko station, don't have the money for it, buy this because you can use the same tips with it. When you do eventually buy your hacko station, you can then use this in your tool bag. You can take it with you mobily. You're not going to take your FM203 uh, out in about you're not going to take it for a walk so uh, this is something i would definitely recommend uh, i honestly think this is probably better than buying one of the t12 stations like the ksger t12s um, I, I think this is a better deal because you're now portable with it as well um, now this circuit board that i've been working on right here is going to make the t12 station portable that was the whole point of this and when i saw this i was like oh hey this is cool i can also power this with it too um so definitely something uh i recommend here uh and i'm not just saying that because they sent it to me for sponsored content uh i do legitimately think this is a great deal it's a bargain at the price it is decently built 
uh, and it'll get you started. And really having an adjustable soldering iron is the main thing that people are messing up when they first get started. Uh, they, they don't use flux, they use cheap solder, and then they don't have an adjustable iron and they go, oh, I can't solder, it's, it's, woe is me, I can't solder. Well, this is, you need something like this where you can adjust the temperature, you need to buy yourself some decent flux and you need to buy yourself some decent leaded solder and the world will be so much easier for you. Uh, it does come with this little kickstand. I do recommend uh, these. You can get them on Amazon uh, for any of these. It fits in there nicely. Uh, so it's definitely a stand that will fit it nicely and work on your bench. Uh, give it more of a permanent home than that. Uh, the, these are uh, about half the price of this though, because this is only like $45, $50. Uh, and uh, this is like $20, $30. So uh, just something to be aware of. Yeah, uh, I, I do recommend this. Uh, there, it's got some quirks to it, like uh, the Allen screws here that kind of set how tight it is. Uh, if you have it too tight, they won't go in, uh, but that is because it supports these, which are a slightly different diameter. Uh, they're, I believe these are a little bit bigger, if I'm not mistaken. They're either bigger or smaller. Yeah, it's it's ever so slightly, but there is a little bit difference in the diameter of these. Uh, so it, is, it, it makes it more universal. The quirks of it are just making it more universal. Uh, you know, you have your, your USB-C connector, you have your barrel jack connector, you have your uh, TS-100 and your T-12. This thing's a steel. It's as, it's as versatile of a soldering iron as I can think of. Um, the, the only thing I would change is maybe put some sort of rubberized silicone uh, on here just to give it a better hand feel. Uh, I do like the early 2000s I build my own computer vibe of the acrylic plastic but yeah I mean that's really all I have to say about this thing I really like it I hope you guys like it and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video